Now I very easily become obsessed with seemingly obscure subjects and none more so than this. This is a landmark Victorian building on a hill overlooking one of Britain's largest cities, Liverpool. And like many Victorian public buildings of its era, it's aesthetically pleasing and extremely well built. But all of that beauty hides a very basic function. It's just a place to store water. But in the modern world, isn't that a bit unusual? Well, the answer to that is a resounding no. In fact, this is not the only structure like this in the area. In fact, there's a whole array of such structures like this across Merseyside and the surrounding counties. Welcome to the wonderful world of water towers. When Britain's towns and cities experienced huge population booms in the early Victorian era, what followed was a rapid spreading of slum housing, disease and death. A strong supply of clean, safe drinking water was the most important factor to public health. But laying down a network of pipes to supply it to millions of people across the country was a huge undertaking and posed many problems. For one, how do you keep pressure in the pipes up during times of high demand? Water treatment works, reservoirs and pumping stations are not the most glamorous of Victorian undertakings, but they are arguably one of the era's biggest achievements. And water towers were part of that but no one ever really established a universal design to be adopted across the board. And so what you get is this wonderful array of designs, some of which don't seem related in the slightest. But they all have the same function, to deliver water in underground pipes to the people that need it most, you and me. So how do they work? Essentially it's quite simple and you can tell by the two characteristics they all have in common. They're all tall structures, and they all hold a body of water off the ground at a given height. And that's it. Most of the structure is empty, which is why some water towers have large holes or spindly legs. The essential bit is to store the water high above the ground to enable gravity to push the water into the pipes and keep that pressure within the pipes up. Okay, so that's enough about how they work. Let's keep looking at some of the best we've got in the northwest. Right, so this one here is Norton Water Tower on a small hill overlooking Runcorn. And as you can see, it's exactly the same or similar at least to Everton Water Tower. It's got that late Victorian look to it. The red sandstone, the rounded arches, the cornice around the top, and then at the very top, the, the iron water tank which holds all the water and it still holds all the water today because this is still an active site this is still used by the utility company united utilities as a water storage site which is hence why i can't get any closer than where i am now but i did used to know somebody who works for united utilities and he very kindly sent me some pictures of what it looks like on the inside so this cracking photo shows the two main elements of all water towers very, very clearly. The up and down pipes forming the central core structure and the huge water tank sitting way up at the top. And around that you've got a lot of empty space, but notice something else most water towers have in common. In this case, the holes on Norton Water Tower provide free lighting for anybody working inside. Right, so this next one is completely different. It's insanely different. So, I'm in Prenton now on the Wirral, the end of Reservoir Road there. Junction with Tower Road, and this is it. This is Prenton Water Tower. And it's completely different. It's a huge building, it's nothing like the other ones. But, there you go, and it's still in use as you can see. United Utilities still use this. I think the use of this has been changed so that it's now part of, um, it's been altered so it's an underground reservoir rather than the tower itself. But still, look at it. Now 
Okay, so this is Flay Brickwater Tower now over on the Wirral and as you can see, it's got that late Victorian style to it, very similar to Everton and Norton Water Towers. This one is still in use though, and you can see the big cast iron water tank up there sat at the top. But still, it's nice to get this close to one, even though I can't get any closer. It's nice to, to be within this distance of one um, and see all that wonderful detail on the architecture there. Why? Why put all that effort in to a water tower? I suppose the question is, why not? Right, so now I'm stood in a back alleyway because of this thing here, this big castle-like water tower. Huge, right in the middle of a neighbourhood. This one at Wallasey is a great example of that lack of uniform water tower design. Left to the free will of architects and engineers, water towers like this began springing up on the edge of settlements. As this map from about 1900 shows, when Wallasey Water Tower was built, it was next to old farmland. But the nearby terraced houses were already under construction, and like many water towers around Britain, this one soon found itself knee deep in them, looming over the houses like an ancient castle keep. Right, that's that one done. Move on to the next one now. If I can remember where I parked the van. Okay, so this next one is absolute beaut. Look at this. No, I'm not just started doing a video about castles. This is a water tower. This is actually a water tower built in 1905. So it's not technically Victorian, but look at the effort it's gone into it. That is not a water tower, that's a medieval castle. <laughs> it's fantastic, but it's still in use. And this long area here, behind the scaffolding, behind the roadworks, is the old reservoir. Part of the old waterworks, 1905, over a hundred years old. Look at it. <laughs> now, one thing I've begun to notice is that these water towers are all deep within residential areas, surrounded by houses. They're not in the middle of nowhere like you would imagine. And that's because that is their purpose to serve these houses, to serve uh, densely populated areas. I mean, look at it, it's a castle. <laughs> it's a castle. Why have they done that? Why have they put so much effort, so much ornate design into it? It's just a water tower. It'd be great to get in there and just have a look around. I imagine it's got dungeons and everything. Um, sadly not, sadly not. Anyway, moving on, let's find the next one. Which brings us to Everton Water Tower. This at last is one that is neither in use still, nor one that has been demolished or turned into housing. Standing proudly at the edge of Everton Brow, this true Liverpool landmark can be seen for miles around. Built in 1857, this gargantuan water tower is made up of three stages. A bottom layer of 12 rusticated arches, a middle layer of 12 taller arches, all connected internally by a complex support structure, and a top layer where the tank once sat. Once surrounded by a web of terraced streets, its position high above the rest of the city made it an ideal place to store water, cleverly using gravity to keep pressure in the pipes nice and high. It was designed by Liverpool's first water engineer, Thomas Duncan, on a site adjacent to a large underground reservoir. And now we can finally see the truth about water tower design. Why build it to be attractive? Well, partly because Victorian engineers loved a bit of over-engineering and were very proud about the aesthetics of all of their constructions, but also because it had to be. The water tank at the top of the Everton Tower needed to be supported by a big solid stone structure, simply because it weighed so much. Anything less than this wouldn't have worked and we find it so attractive because, well, it's round, it's red sandstone, and it's simple. 
And for whatever reason, the human brain generally likes those three things. And this one's for sale. Look. Anyone want to buy a water tower? Cost you a few bob. Right, so leaving the city now and heading towards Ormskirk to the north where there's a couple of water towers, a couple of cool looking water towers um, I'm hoping to find and film while the sun's still out. The sun is setting really quickly. Um, but this traffic is doing my head in. Right, so this is the one I've come to see south of Ormskirk. In fact, this is the one I've been wanting to see all day long. Look at it, this is Scarth Hill Water Tower. It's like a UFO landed. But unfortunately, I can't get any closer to view it, to film it, because it's highly monitored by United Utilities who own the site. But what a thing. <laughs> Now you won't be shocked to hear that this modernist concrete UFO hasn't been here for long, relatively speaking at least. In the early 1970s, after surveying the numerous water towers around Ormskirk and deciding they all badly needed repair, the authorities decided to demolish a host of them and build this one instead. With a capacity of 400,000 gallons, more than double that of the last one, this new mushroom looking tower would do the job of many. And like Everton and Norton water towers, Scarth Hill is now a local landmark. That also seems to be a common theme for our water towers. Not really in our thoughts, but always in our landscape. I've right, got one more to go now, uh, but we're losing light. We're losing light, boys. So, got to crack on. Hopefully we'll get there before dark. Right, so, made it at last. This is the last one of the day for me. This is Tower Hill Water Tower in Ormskirk. And it's beautiful, it's simple. It's got a Romanesque design with the, the holes, the, the, the arched holes there. Um, and as you can see, there's no water tank on top. The, there would have been a cast iron water tank up there, sat on top of the brickwork, but there's nothing. That's because it's not in use anymore, obviously. But the reason I wanted to come to this one so desperately when the moon is out and everything it's because this is apparently the oldest water tower in the country dating back to 1854 at least the, the oldest surviving water tower in the country and the fact that it's still here on the edge of an allotment next to a busy road houses around it when it could have easily been demolished and thrown away or forgotten about it's just fantastic and it's testament to the longevity of water towers as part of British society and British culture and our community. So that's it from me and that's it from the water towers of Merseyside, the Wirral and Lancashire today and I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. It's certainly a niche little passion to have. But aren't they just amazing? This is a water tower. It's the most utilitarian kind of thing you could have. It's boring but look at it they made it look spectacular and we've seen some fantastic ones today so we've seen the victorian grand red sandstone victorian ones like this different designs round ones square ones castle ones and we've seen a futuristic one just down the road from here at scarth hill it's like a ufo landed in brutalist soviet uh, russia but anyway thanks so much and i'll see you in the next video bye
And there you go. Have I convinced you that water towers are interesting then? What do you mean, no?